I decided that it wasn't best to introduce yourself, so I asked somebody to help. Hello, my name is Michael Brown. I met Johnny a year ago in March uh, when I came over as part of a sister cities exchange. Uh, I was to travel to Leeds to photograph, and John was going to come to Louisville to photograph. Uh, we hit it off immediately as we were both uh, Nikon shooters. Uh, John was the driving force in setting up my portrait project there and uh, also setting up a lecture where I might speak of my uh, Russian portrait project and also allowed me to take part in a portrait workshop while I was there. Um, before John's trip to Louisville in September of last year, he had already made friends with many photographers here via the internet. In fact, more photographers than I knew. Um, and. Uh, he had also set up meetings and uh, photo walks here. I'd never been to a photo walk, so I took part briefly in the one that he had set up here. Uh, by the time John left Louisville, he was already tweeting our mayor, and uh, his name was being called across crowded restaurants. John is a friend of photography, a, a friend to photographers, an educator, an organizer, a tireless networker, and a good friend. It's with great pleasure that I introduce John Eagle. And I'll pay when I go back. Um, when I posted about this evening, I came up with the title of Whatever Did John Get Up To In Louisville, or whatever I called it. Um, then in the months since, I had thoughts about what I should call this, and two things come to mind. Um, one of the things I did on the very last days in Louisville was go to the very last day, sorry, was go to a store called Why Louisville, which is just a great store full of what we probably call tats, but when you're abroad it appears a lot less like tat, but it's just everything was Louisville focused and it was wonderful. And that sort of ever since I've come back I've had all these questions of well why go to Louisville? Now there's a very good answer, simple answer is that Leeds has a partnership agreement with Louisville, that's what started it. But beyond that, there's a number of things that we have in common. We have museums that have a partnership agreement. The Fraser here in Louisville um, is linked with the Armoury here in Leeds. I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. Geographically, they're similar, and, and commercially, historically, both cities came about really from um, commercial activity linked to the river. So whereas most cities and towns in the UK, it was generally to do with the river was there and people in that there's Leeds very much grew commercially around the river and it certainly grew into being its own because of the river there and as did Louisville. Um, I don't talk a lot about that but if you want to find out more please ask me, I'll explain. Um, both relatively new cities, as in um, Leeds historically wasn't that big in, in the local vicinity and, until sort of the last 50, 60, 70 years. Louisville very similar, it, it wasn't a significant city, it's grown recently. They're of a similar size. Louisville's a little larger, but uh, again, it's not a huge American city. It's got 1.4 million people, 1.2 million people, something like that, well, not that far away. And certainly city-wise, they feel comparative when you visit them. And neither city is massively renowned. Apologies to the people who work at the city council in the audience who tell me that. Sorry, Martin. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're, they're not, they're both workhorse cities, the cities that get things done, that have lots of people that are, are working towards that, and, and they're generally renowned for that. Both are changing that opinion and working hard to change that opinion, that's traditionally where they've been seen, certainly. And one of the things I've also found is very similar, they have both a, um, a creative culture and a technological culture, and both very much desire to improve the cities. There's a lot of cities that are, say they're trying to improve and aren't doing very much about it. Both Louisville and Leeds both feel the cities. So that's where why I see the the link between Leeds and Louisville works. So after that brief introduction, I'm going to give you a bit of an introduction to me and how I came to be doing that. I'll be doing this relatively quickly a bit for those in the audience that may have not have a rounder picture of how I came to be sitting here today. In 1980, that's not me, that's my brother. He'll be very excited to know he appeared on a photographic presentation to a bunch of strangers. I got a Polaroid 800, shortly followed by 110, 
uh, camera, moved on to a Practica SLR, I eventually had an Olympus OM10. I went off to university where I used a camera as mainly a research medium. Um, photography played a part, it was a graphics course, it had to play a part. Um, it was part of my design, part of the research. We had a darkroom uh, section of the course. Um, at college I also collaborated. I created a course magazine. There's not been one before, there wasn't one after I left, but I enjoyed doing that, that sort of social aspect. I also ran the final three shows at the university. And we weren't content just to have the one or maybe two, but we actually ran three shows. And up till now you're probably thinking degree, well this was actually a HMD that ran three shows, which was quite unusual. And I, I, I ran that. I then took leave of photography for a decade or so. I went into working creatively. It eventually petered out. There was a lot of alcohol on the weekend and on an evening that probably got in the way of doing lots of creative stuff. I stopped doing that and had to find a new hobby. Bonsai, my first choice, probably wasn't going to be active enough for me, so my second choice was photography. Um, I got a digital camera. That was the first one I got. Some nice men entered my house and relieved me of that one. I replaced it with another one very shortly afterwards. Uh, towards the middle of 2006, I came across Flickr. Um, I wasn't on Flickr for very long before I thought, sure, there's something about all these people talking to each other where we can actually get together and do something. Um, in early September, myself and Lloyd got together in Scarborough Taps and said, can we do something that's more than people just meeting up and uh, balancing peanuts actually was one of the things that came up with previous um, Flickr meets. So we moved on, we had, um, we started Click and Sub, we started Theme of the Week, both of which are still going on five and a half years later. And, and I think, um, to a large extent, what I did and how I worked with Lisa Flickr Group massively helped me to understand what people needed from a photo group and what shape the camera club should look like. The following year, I produced a book of my photos. Um, I, it was all very exciting having these things on a screen, but it was like, well, what do you do with them now? It's, comments are good, but I've no permanent record of what's going on. If this internet thing dies, I've lost my pictures. So I turned a book out of my work, but I also, shortly after, did my first big collaboration project, which was at the time it was completely mental because I just thought, oh here's a good idea, just throw these briefs at the screen and see what happens. Well, 30 odd photographers took part, we produced hundreds of new photos, we then threw those into a book, okay, there's a bit more thoughts in that, but essentially everything that got submitted went into a book. Um, a copy of that here if you've not seen it. Moving on from there, the following year um, I'd attended a bar camp, which was sort of like a tech event, um, where people got together and talked about whatever they felt passionate about, so run a short lecture of half an hour or so, and then you'd move on to the next one. I thought this will work for photography, I did a little bit of research, there have been a couple run in the States, but not in Europe, so we ran the first European photo camp here in Leeds um, in 2008. Um, this photo was taken by Cyber Gabby, who you can just see here. Gabby, at my request, came from Frankfurt in the middle of moving from Frankfurt to Rotterdam to take part in PhotoCamp. That was just amazing. Just the fact that people had come from Frankfurt, another person came from Spain, there was a, a Glaswegian came. Um, just for this thing where I said, let's get together and just talk about photography for a couple of days. Um, next year, we ran a photo camp again early in the year that was shortly followed by Exposure League starting. That's when my life started to get really complicated. Um, later that year, we moved the photo camp to Bradford for a couple of years. Um, this is in the Impressions Gallery, but it was also the National Media Museum. And whilst we were there, a gentleman came down from Edinburgh, took part and said, John, do you mind if I take this up to Scotland? And then photo camp moved to Edinburgh around two years there, because they missed last year. Haven't caught up with them yet about why, but very successful event in two locations. While I've been up in Photocamp Edinburgh, I got invited over to the coast to see an old friend, an old lecturer friend, who said, why don't you exhibit at 
at my arts festival. And I said, yeah, that's all right, but I can't sit around and manage an exhibition all week. I want to enjoy that sort of thing. So I decided that I'd do something as part of this arts festival. That doing was a photo walk, which we had 50 people turn up for, which was quite astounding, really. It's just uh, we put it in the brochure, and we turned up at this library, and we, we split it into two group, groups and took hundreds of photos. I also documented the festival that year and was a project that still waits for me to finalise and sort it out, but uh, I think it's 90 to 100 different artists and people that took part in the actual behind the scenes part of the <coughs> festival. Um, that's coming together and will be presented um, hopefully in June when I go up this year for the festival. The final one is where this journey starts. That's Leeds Photo Week Owl. Uh, Leeds Photo Week was something we decided to run because we had to move photo count back a bit. We had a huge gap in September and it was generally a month we get a lot done in. So we ran photo camp as part of that. We ran a, an exhibition of a hundred or so photos of Leeds that had been received a lot of attention on Flickr. As part of that, a young lady called Alex turned up and said, John, we've got this gentleman from America who would like to come to Leeds and show his photos and take some photos Can you actually host him. At which point I cheekily said, that's fine, but if we're having someone over, shouldn't we be sending someone back? And having been the event that was why not to go a bit more cheap and said, would that be a problem if it was me? Well, we actually went through a process of months of talking then between myself and my co-directors about whether I was the right person to go, with the final decision was made that I was. And we progressed. To Michael arrived in March 2011. Um, we first met in a curry house, which was perfect for Leeds. Um, met him with Alex and Mick and Jill, who are now very good friends as well. We did a lot that week, um, similar to what you'll find out about my trip. We, you, when you do these twinning trips, you have to get a lot out of it, otherwise you just don't get the other place. So we threw Michael in at the deep end. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that towards the end of the session, about what we've learned from hosting someone as well as from me going over there. But yes, we had Michael. So he had a couple of days of meeting the great and good. He went to the ballet, he went, visited the markets, he photographed the mayor and some of the mayor's uh, staff. He went to the armories, he photographed behind the scenes of the armories. And he went over to Holbeck to see the um, the Victorian buildings are now housing uh, the technological community. He attended the Culture Vulture's second birthday. Um, we went to Better Culture, which if you don't know is a lot faster presentation than I'm delivering tonight. <laughs> um, I have delivered a Better Culture presentation, so I know what it's like to do a slide every 20 seconds. Luckily, I don't have to do that tonight. Um, What's quite interesting is a turnaround. Not only did I present at the first Better Culture in Leeds, well, Petter Culture, or Culture, which is based on Petter Culture, I'll get it right eventually, is what it's based on, which came out of Japan. Michael recently, about two weeks ago, presented at the Louisville version of that. Uh, I've also been invited that if the schedules work out right, I'll be presenting in the September one, which I'm very nervous about. Blue, what I'll tell a Louisville audience about, but probably Leeds, I'll say, oh, here's Leeds. As, Lee, as Michael mentioned, we also had his exhibition and talk over at Project Space Leeds, um, which is around his work over in Perm in Russia, which is another of Louisville's um, twin sisters, their uh, twin cities. Sorry, I get completely mixed up. We call them twin cities, they call it sister cities, and I end up merging the two at least several times in every conversation. So if I call them twisters or <laughs> then don't worry about it. The reason Michael ended up here was the person who's involved in the Leeds connection saw his perm talk and said, you'd be brilliant to send to Leeds, which started the conversation. Um, one of the things we thought Michael really ought to see is the Leeds culture, so we took him out on a Saturday night around the streets of Leeds. Um, Lloyd and myself had a very good evening, entertaining evening. Um, Michael saw a young lady doing interesting things in Yates's window. Um, I don't have that picture. Um, 
but we, we showed a diverse section of Leeds. It wasn't just let's show Leeds in terms of the, the, the tourist picture city of Leeds, let's show him the entirety of Leeds and let's understand, let him understand what Leeds is about. So, um, we also showed a little bit of the region around Leeds. Um, we took a day trip out to Sculpture Park. Um, that's Michael and Deer Shelter. All these pictures are mine. I do apologise to Michael for just showing those pictures of him, but it seems to be appropriate. We also tried to tie in a little bit with this previous project. So this is Michael in my great aunt and uncle's living room. Um, it's a picture of my great uncle who was a uh, prisoner of war in the Second World War, which links with a lot of his work in Russia, which was around the Second World War and First World War veterans. Andy took a picture of me and my mum and dad who were in the audience tonight, so I've got to embarrass them a little bit. If you want to see Michael's pictures, flicker.com slash brum photo. You don't need to make notes, by the way, I'll put a couple of these slides on my... Um, so Michael arrived, Michael left. It was a whirlwind week and then I had a load of other things hit me and... Various things happened over the next few months and it's like... Plan it, how do you plan a visit to do something you've never done before? It's very odd. It's going, going away to do something is fine when you're going on holiday. When you're trying to work out how do I go to a country to do something where I've no plan of what to do, but I have to come back with something that's working. So there was a few calls. Um, I've got very proficient at video Skyping now, or, and I at least don't look completely sheepish and scared stiff when I don't want to video Skype. There's lots of emails and web searches, a lot of flicker shout outs. Um, I came across the concept of visa waivers, which was new to me. I bought a new camera, I bought a new lens that I didn't actually take with me anywhere while I was there. And I bought, I, I had Evil Loot created, so a little bit more about him in a second. I also had some cards produced. This, the reason with cards, I have got a few here, name one side and little QR codes on the other side, was the realisation that when I started to plan this trip, it was a photographer going to Louisville. Then I realised, well, one, I'm representing me, I'm representing the city, but beyond that, I'm representing Exposure Leads, and I'm also representing the work I do in the local tech community. So there's this like, confusion about all these different roles and how do I represent those. So essentially, the links are to a whole set of different contact details and explanations of why I might have given someone this card in the first place. I'll just jump back quickly. Exposure Leads badge, most of you have one. If you haven't, there's plenty out on the table. Grab yourself one. I gave one of those out every time I took a portrait. Um, we bought a brand new bag in September. I didn't come back with any out of the 200 bags. So I shot 200 people's portraits while I was out there. So in terms of, did I work that week? Yes, I did. I took 200 individual people's portraits at some time or another. The night before I travelled, I met Sylvia. Sylvia had been my liaison in Louisville, which is absolutely great until you realise that Sylvia wasn't in Louisville the whole time I was there. Um, I found this out mid-August. It's like, John, by the way, I'm actually going to be in England in September. Oh. Like, no, well, you're, I'm coming over to see... No, 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 you I was actually down to stay in a house at the time, but we sorted all that out, and Michael put me up. He always thought I was staying with him anyway, so that was easily solved. But it was very odd meeting the person you were liaising with in the pub about six hours before you were due to fly. Um, but we had a lovely talk. It was her and Anne Green from the Royal Armouries, and we um, we had a lovely chat, and we had a lot of chats ever since. I'm very fond of Sylvia now. So we set off. It's the plane picture on the tarmac. That happens in Philadelphia, which was the airport I stopped off at. In Philadelphia airport. Evil Lou. I have a friend who makes these things. They're completely mental. Here's Evil Lou's replacement. The reason Evil Lou needs a replacement, and this is Louis's bill, um, is some idiot left Evil Lou in the back of the chair in front when he got to the plane in Louisville. So Evil Lou stopped. I don't know where he got to, but had him made. And the big plan was to have him in lots of pictures all over. And that was the only picture I've got. <laughs> As, um, just in case Sophie was actually in the audience who made him, I thought I'd better mention it. Uh, networking. Some of this is just stuff I picked up along the way, but you get an idea. That's about a third the number of business cards I picked up from people 
when I was there. It was a very go out and meet people event and that started on day one. Um, I'd been talking to Deborah for a couple of months. She was the first person to contact me when I said what's going on in Louisville photographically, who's doing the same sort of thing, where doing the exposure leads. Um, and I got invited to their barbecue and unfortunately the other event I was hoping to go to, I couldn't get to because it coincided with one of my other engagements. So I went to, they had a barbecue in, um, in Bernheim, Arboretum and Forest. I was reading it really small, this is big. Um, Bernheim's not unlike the Sculpture Park, I guess, or Temple News or whatever. It's basically a huge chunk of land given by an industrialist, in this time a bourbon baron. Um, it's since been improved, they've installed the Arboretum, they've put a lake in, but basically a huge chunk of land with a forest attached. Now it's a nature reserve where people can go out and have barbecues, etc. The first thing we saw was a huge collection of flies. Just thought it was interesting. This is the, um, the photographers' meeting. Um, as you can guess, they were all looking at photos on an iPad. So the best thing out here in lovely beauty, all with cameras, but we're all looking at pictures on someone else's iPad. Which I thought, that's great, because that's just like what we do in Leeds. Um, there's quite a lot of people shots in here. The one thing I did set out to do was to take people. So you'll just see labels a little bit. I, I did, we spent three or four hours at this barbecue. It wasn't like just a land and go and see them. It was an odd experience. Michael obviously didn't know these people, so we turned up 20 miles outside Louisville in the woods with a bunch of people that we just had a little bit of email contact with. And, and basically just went, hi, is anyone here called Deborah? And we met her, and they were really welcoming, and it was the start of a really, lots of being really welcomed. Um, there was a number of people, and I'll be sharing all these pictures online soon. That was Bob doing an unportrait, um, which he was fun. Bob was a lot of fun. Um, I got taught how to make s'mores, <laughs> which um, I had no even knowledge of before I walked into this barbecue, but I certainly learned how to char grill my marshmallows and <laughs> dip them in chocolate and wrap them in some crackers and then wince when you taste the char grill and marshmallows. <laughs> but we also had Kentucky Derby pie which was fantastic and I tried to get some for tonight but couldn't manage to arrange it so I do apologise. Um, by the way this isn't a holy snaps, I'm going to go through every single thing I did in the week but this is the same day we also went to the Jim Bean distillery and this is a shop from there and I quite like the shop so it's in the set. And what it is is it's a series of sets around some of the things I did, not necessarily all in chronology. Um, shortly before I arrived Michael had just started teaching for the first time in I think 15-20 years <coughs> um, at Spalding University which is a smaller university probably similar to Trinity is in Leeds. Um, it runs a lot of um, vocational courses. It's um, Michael's. It doesn't actually run any arts-based courses as the degree. So Michael's course was a, a, a top of extra sort of thing that he was running. Um, so we went into Spalding University. The front main building is a grand old Victorian mansion. It was obviously some important person's house. I was probably told who, but I didn't hear that. Comes from called Spalding, I suggest. Um, well, that's lovely, but then on the other side was the normal classrooms that we were in doing arts, so that's, it resonated with me having been to art school. I walked in and there's my name on a board, I've not seen my name on a blackboard for a while, and luckily this wasn't being reprimanded, so that's fine. <laughs> but then the next word was critique, which we hadn't really discussed, Mike said, can you come in and lecture my students? I said, yeah, that's fine. And as with one of the things probably a little bit like me, Michael doesn't always tell people what he's expecting of them. So I turn up at this yeah. and it's like, we sit down, I talk to a student who happens to be early, she'd taken a couple of portraits for the discussion. These guys had only been shooting photographs um, on film for like four weeks. So it's, it's not, these aren't seasoned photographers. 
So it's more a case of learning data and techniques combined with an ability to take a decent portrait in this case of whatever the other weeks were. I luckily landed on portrait week. So we talked um, about, I gave my feedback on these, she told me a little bit about them, well, no, I do apologise, um, a little bit about her rationale, which one she preferred, why she preferred it. That was nice as a warm up. Then, um, this is Michael talking, I'm, I'm good enough not to take photos whilst I'm talking. Um, this is Michael talking, about 10 seconds later said, and here's John, he's going to tell you about what he does in Leeds at five. Okay, um, luckily I thought to bring a stack of books, which included the Unguide to Leeds, which many of you have seen or have a copy of, but also some of my other publications. I talked a little about why I take uh, my photography, the whole narrative curve thing, and, and, and that sort of thing, and a little bit about what we get up to as a group here in Leeds and what other people do and, and that sort of thing. That was a 15 minute quick chat after which we assembled for a group photo or rather they assembled for a group photo that was out of focus. <laughs> <laughs> I took 10 shots out of focus. How I can manage, okay, I got through it all and it's like, sat down for the critique and then went, Ah, my camera's set on manual focus. I didn't notice that. <laughs> so, took part in the first critique I'd ever sat through properly since college back in 92, 3. That was a bit of an eye opener and took some shots while I was sat there. And, and that was amazing. It was actually really nice to be sat with a bunch of people who were actually interested in photography like yourselves in another city. but. People who it wasn't a primary interest, it was literally somebody who was just doing it as their top of course. And to actually have them explain why they took the photos and what the, the aspects were behind them. There were some quite intriguing shots, um, so that was quite cool. So another set of images is the reason why I was there. The um, Royal Armies has been in Leeds a number of years. I remember it being built, but I can't remember when it was built. But more recently, the Frasier in Louisville was opened in, I think it was around 2004. Um, shortly after, it, it and, and that was based on Owsley Brown Frasier's collection. Now, we won't know the name Brown or, or Frasier particularly well. We may not even know the name Brown Foreman, but we may know the names Jack and Daniels and Southern and Comfort. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the big things I realised since I landed in Louisville was there's two very big names that are linked to Kentucky. One's very obvious, the other one we actually think of as being linked to another state, but very la largely the Brown former family was based in Kentucky rather than down in Louisiana where a lot of the Germans actually made. Um, and basically the Brown formans have bankrolled a fair amount of um, some of the nice things in Louisville. One of which is Fraser History Museum, which is a whole set of, it's very similar to the armories, a bit of a smaller scale, um, but it's a similar concept. I'll come on to the dioramas in a minute, there was lots of them. But again, met lots of people. Clifford was a volunteer at the museum. It was, it was quite cool. It was shortly after, whilst I was talking to Louisville, I spotted what was behind Jerry's shoulder. It was really odd going into a building and seeing branding for a museum that's in the city you've come from. So walking into a museum and seeing stuff that looks like it's just been lifted from the armories was quite crazy. But Jerry was great. They had a few of these interpreters that would dress up and similar to the armories. Um, I also popped and saw um, a bunch of actors preparing for um, Edgar Allan Poe's The Bells. I'm illustrate, so I want to have a clue. I know the name Edgar Allan Poe. That's about where my interest in the subject ends. So if anyone wants to tell me a little more about that, I really ought to do my research on these sorts of things. <coughs> this was a great shot for two reasons. One, I love it as a shot, but the other one is it's perfect for Zoe. Zoe's Sylvia's daughter. Zoe um, works at the museum as an interpreter. Zoe filled in for Sylvia a fair bit once the whole panic around Sylvia being in Leeds settled down, she not only got me access to the museum, showed me behind the scenes and, and basically took me anywhere I wanted to go in the museum, she
she also managed to get me into something that's not picked up here tonight, but a rehearsal for a rough horror uh, show. There's pictures on my Flickr if you want to see those. They didn't necessarily link into this presentation, so they're not showing at the moment. Um, and they're also part of a project that will be coming on following this. But one of the things I got from being there, one of the things I get from all these sorts of museums that were created in those sort of like late 90s, early 2000s, these dioramas. Dioramas are fantastic. And they're just like such serious faces and everything. And it's like I have to capture them. So I pulled together a series of shots of which this was one of the plant things you were going to get at this evening, which I will plan. And anyone that was here will get one. There's a little zine of those images. It will be bigger when you get it at the five, but that's basically that. And this is a series of images of all these crazy um, waxworky type characters in the museum. It's just fantastic. We're showing a mixture of um, war scenes from all over the world. It wasn't just American or British. There was, there was a lot of it linked to it, but similar. And then the token British person welcoming everyone to the Royal Hammers. The, um, the museum is on West Main Street. Um, Louisville's essentially got an east and a west, and everything's just split one way or the other, and Michael's on East Market, uh, Market being the other main street in Louisville. But this was quite an amazing place. It's something I remember from my childhood in Wakefield of there being places, I'm sure there was everywhere in the UK you got things like this. I'm sure you can still find them in very occasional places, but not in the middle of the main street in a city that doesn't actually have very many shops in the city centre. There was this army surplus store. Let me just jump back to my notes there. Yeah, Julian opened the store in 1939. He's now 18. Um, with his, uh, the rest of his family, but he was involved back then. Um, he and his dog man the store when it's open. He has the most interesting signs in the building. The one on the left, it's a bit difficult to read, but it says, put things back where it belongs. <laughs> and then the other one I'll let you read yourself, but it was just... <laughs> I didn't actually ask him whether the dog really was called Timex or not, but it was just absolutely, and I will be going back. I really hope it's still, still there when I next visit the room. It had all the usual army surplus stuff. And another interesting story. <laughs> <laughs> Again, there's a publication of this coming out. Trying to get to the printers, but uh, so this was you had the front of the store, which was probably about the way from the front door to here. Then you had this bit, it was like this is the second bit to the shop, and it's just like this huge shop full of it, mostly crap. Those <laughs> all these baskets were full of stuff that no one would ever buy unless they just happened to walk and go, ah, in fact, there'd probably be an artist that would go in and buy and go, ah, I can use this in insulation, I can glue it. <laughs> And it was just, it was mental, it went right back to this window, it's just a fantastic place, and we, we just, at the time, I'm a bit annoyed I didn't actually buy anything in there, and if I do go back, I'll definitely buy something just to the bottom. Did you mail order? <laughs> I'm not sure he does email even. I think, um, with, well, with the hand grenades, you might not get back in. Yeah, what was quite interesting though was, and if you read a bit on, on, um, flicker about it was we were joking about Julian and his, and his but he's quite a clued up guy I mean there's an interview on the New York Times website with him talking about um, a building that was due to be built that didn't happen and him explaining the economic reasons locally and he'd obviously been interviewed for it and they'd chosen to represent him so and he was he was very friendly towards me he's a bit of a crotchety old guy but he was still friendly and helpful and uh, probably a bit disappointed we didn't buy anything, but it was more than happy to post for his photo as was anything else. In fact, one of the interesting things was, and I'm sure anyone else that's photographed anywhere other than home, is it's 
really easy to get people to let you take the photo. I had one rejection the whole time. Only one person said no. I asked everyone before I took the picture and only one said no. And I found similar experience elsewhere. If you explain why you're doing it, usually a project, you allude a little bit towards an education, then um, people seem to be happy to let you take the photo. One of the reasons we, I chose to be in Louisville when I was was there is an, a big event. It's basically a conference called Idea Festival, a conference with a series of events around it. It's an innovation-focused uh, conference. It's, I've been to a lot of tech conferences in the past. It has some tech elements to it, but it's actually innovation in its entirety. Um, it was a wonderful experience to go there. I was invited. I was given a free pass for the um, three days I was attending. Um, went to quite a few different events. There was the welcome event in 21C. 21C, in and of itself, I'll tell you a little bit more about, but this was basically a big function in... 21C is a hotel, but it also has a, what it calls a museum, but it's basically an art gallery, and this was in the art gallery part of it. Within seconds of walking into the building, Mike went, that's the mayor, you should go and talk to him and take his photo. I went, okay, but how do you go and take the mayor's photo? He said, fine, don't worry. He walked up to me and said, here's John, he's from the UK, he wants to take your photo, he's on twin trip from Leeds, uh, which of course the mayor says yes. The thing not to forget about this is, this is the mayor introducing the opening of the Idea Festival in the middle of what is probably his biggest crisis of the year. That week they found a huge crack in one of the bridges over the Ohio, Ri Ohio River. You're probably aware of how important the bridges are to Leeds. Well, over in Louisville the river's a mile-ish or so wide. So when you close one of the three bridges that go across it, the one that most people travel across, it has a bit of an impact on city life. He said yes to taking the photo, obviously there he is. The next day he opened Idea Festival before getting on a plane to go and meet the President of America to ask for some money to repair his bridge. This is, it was just, the fact that he said yes, he took time to speak to me, he took time to open this festival. He obviously <coughs> thought it really important this festival takes time. In the city. <coughs> Whilst at the city I met the event photographer so I took his picture. Uh, I don't know whether he got a picture of mine, I've never seen it, I need to get in, I've been trying to get in touch with him but he's not answering emails at the moment. Two unlikely lads entered a photo booth. <laughs> Despite the whiskey in the hand, we'd actually not drank any at this point, it was a case of, this was high on life. I also at that event met Gregory, who I actually bumped into two, three other times during the week, who was a psychologist who'd become an artist. He walked up to me, waving this thing at me, going, this is really important. Now, this is a Spanish language magazine. He'd got the first ever English article in it, and it was all about Thomas Merton and all these things. And he spent ages telling me about it, and I still haven't worked out what it really means. So if anyone wants to read it and tell me about how this is important for life in general. 21C is a hotel and a museum. It's very odd in its concept. It's certainly not similar to anywhere else I've been to. And it, it's very nice when you go in. It's one of those swanky hotels you go into and you go, yeah, I'd like to afford to be able to stay here. It has weird things like limousines covered in these little blobs. That's a proper limousine there. There just happens to be a cross-section of it. It has an art museum slash gallery as part of it that just brought in this... this well, if you like what you like about modern art, but I suspect this wasn't a cheap exhibit to bring in, this hydraulic claw that slowly scratched its way across this concrete flooring. Um, it has had interactive art in the foyer. You went into the bar next door and there was more art there. Um, art that you wouldn't expect in what is a relatively... It's not New York. It's quite a laid-back city in Louisville, but there was... Um, art that was sort of along the lines to all of, of native people and that sort of thing that just really out of the ordinary in this and it has penguins on the roof <coughs> but it's just an amazing place I'm hoping to get some links with them um, we've got some interesting connections there right I've talked so far about the launch event for Idea Festival let's get to the actual festival itself the festival was in the Kentucky Centre which is in Louisville one of the really intriguing things about the event was I've been to a lot of 
like tech type events and that sort of thing in the UK. And you get the occasional student. Here, a third of the audience was students. And I don't just mean students that are doing degree level, I mean right down to uh, 14, 15, 16 year olds attending quite a serious highbrow, not highbrow, but intellectual conference in some ways. And they were the ones that were getting up and asking the interesting questions. It was quite intriguing and it was definitely exciting to see that um, three students out. I have a bunch of students. Um, anyone who's been to a recent conference will probably where people tweet at conferences now. It's tweet for each other and follow each other at conferences. I was tweeting away here just thinking, uh, maybe I'll get some interest, maybe I'll go to meet some more people. One of those was CC, he's a blogger, he's a dad who blogs, um, looking up on, on the web, CC Chapman. Talking to him for a while, halfway through the conference, he said, you're quite passionate, John, grab me and ask me a load of questions to video camera. At some point soon, there's a video coming out in America of me talking about um, what I'm passionate about. Um, he was great, we're still in contact. Um, as you and Tina to her side, I don't actually know Tina. I had actually taken Tina's portrait about half an hour previous to this, and then I, I was trying to get Azure as one of the speakers portrait, and I happened to meet her, so uh, a lovely picture of them together. Again, um, a little bit out of focus, but... Um, Azure was amazing. She was a straight poet. She'd gone through life doing what she should have done. She became went into HR. Didn't like HR very much, left HR, told them she was going to be poet and under under for a year and then decided that actually when this year was actually asked by Hillary Clinton to present something that her daughter had actually done relatively well and she could talk to her about. Um, but no, she was cool and we, we had a good chat again by Twitter. Um, I'm huge in magazines and one of the magazines I really respect is Fast Company. Anyone that doesn't isn't aware of it's basically wired for business. Ellen's one of the leading journalists. She's interviewed the great and the good, Bill Gates, the president, etc. There she was at this conference and there she is wearing one of our badges. Um, she was just so much fun to be around. Um, she also got interviewed by CC. And Chris. I wouldn't have been there without Chris. Uh, Sylvia said, speak to this guy called Chris, he might be able to help you get into this conference. I had no idea until about a week before I left that Chris actually ran the conference and he was, he's, um, they have a uh, science and technology um, development company that's uh, run there and he's been in it since day block. And he was just amazing. It's like anything I asked for, it's like, John, no problem. John, no problem. Can I, can I have an all access area pass? Yeah, no problem. Can I take photos wherever I want on the tour? Yeah, don't worry about it. Just get on with it. So it was, it was really good, very welcoming. Um, a shot in for just being a shot. I just, I'd, I'd been through this talk, I was stood at the front. This was a, a breakfast talk. Um, I think I was there for 8 o'clock. Which, if anyone knows me, I don't choose to be at <laughs> presentations at 8 o'clock in the morning. But it was a really good one. There's a lot of speakers talking about passions and type passions in with innovation <laughs> and I was waiting to get a portrait of one of the speakers and I just turned around and there was these three ladies at the back and I just I shot that one shot and got it and it was cool and I was really pleased with it so. um, the other big thing Louisville's famous for is the Kentucky Derby certainly the biggest horse race in America the biggest fireworks display in America it brings a ridiculous number of people into the city for two weeks a year. Um, and this is Churchill Downs, which is a race course that the Kentucky Derby is run at. And the reason I was there was not sightseeing, was part of Idea Festival. They had a food festival, and I went along to see who I could meet there, see some people um, chilling out a bit more. Um, one well, of the first people I met was Michael, who has no idea what the Idea Festival is, but he loved food and whiskey, so he was there, he paid his $30 to go in and um, actually just enjoy the food and whiskey. And they're demonstrating a soft drink, unfortunately not whiskey, but they were cool. I've been talking to Taylor since, I sent her the picture, she was quite um, thankful for me sending it. I'll, she's one of only three people who've contacted me since directly and said, there's my picture. No, she was cool. Those are the people you were trying to uh, choose a label for on Facebook, didn't they? Ah, no. With a different, different demonstrators. Diff 
different demonstrators, but it applied to them as well. I dropped that slide actually. <laughs> um, again, Max and Eli just walked around in the ponchos. It was just slightly odd, and we couldn't work out why they were doing it. I never actually got around to asking them because they were a bit nervous, but they'll have to take the photo. And Willie, who was a master distiller, and for that reason alone, and his hat, I have to take his picture. Um, diversity of the conference, just showing Lindsay, this is her at Churchill Downs, but I, she was actually on stage at the festival as well, so they got her on the stage, she was um, a violinist who happened to play hip-hop violin. I'm not totally sure what that means, I haven't a clue what hip-hop really means, so um, if you want to look her up, Lindsay Sterling, she was very good at dancing on it, so playing the violin. <laughs> Um, I'm not a sporting person. Mm. I, the last time I went to a football match was probably a Cub Scout football match 25 years ago or so, and certainly never been to Leeds United or the rugby teams or anything locally. And Michael decided because of that it would be really good that I went to a football match. Um, it was very intriguing to go to a high school football match in, in, in the States. It's, it's an odd experience having been to things locally in this country where I actually get maybe half a dozen parents on the touchline or whatever and um, maybe fighting amongst themselves. But here it was actually a huge turnout for what was just a minor game. It wasn't an important game to either of the teams involved. They were just, it's like a local derby sort of thing and um, took a few pictures. But it was just, the combination of lighting was great. Huge, great big uh, searchlights across the place, uh, floodlights across the place, sorry. But just, the people were very happy and content to have you around taking photos of them. Not all looked like the content, but no one complained, no one gave me a look like, why are you taking that picture? They just carried on. One or two would ask what I was doing, but that was it. And all quite friendly. And it was a really good evening. It was, it was definitely different and opened something new for me that I wouldn't have. I said I would never have done it. Um, I've now printed a lot of those photos, which are in this. I'm selling copies of this. Um, by the way, the stuff I'm selling is not to make me money, it's to get copies out there, so I basically cover cost and reprint costs. So where there's money involved, it's just to ensure I'm not out of pocket, that's all. But, just that. Feel free to just look through it, you don't have to buy it at all, but um, I had a fantastic evening, got a great set of pictures out of attending that. Um, I will be taking a copy back to um, the school that actually gave us permission, which unfortunately isn't the school that's pictured in most of the photos, just we're on the wrong side of the touchline, but um, I'll send them to the school. One of the things that's come out of all this, it was a fantastic week, I did a lot. Um, where Michael lives is the East Market district of, of Louisville. Um, he's on the 700 block. He's actually at 711, which used kept amusing me, and yeah, I could never remember his number. Um, it was, but it was an inspiring area. It was an area that basically Mark, East Market and West Market streets came about because of how Louisville came about. Louisville is on a bend in the Ohio River. It has um, some rapids on the bend. And basically the boats that were coming up and down couldn't get past. So what we would have to do is stop at one side of the bend, unload everything off that um, boat, take it across Louisville, which didn't exist then, and load it onto another boat that would go up the other side of the Ohio River. Straightforward, city evolves around that traffic. Basically sheep and, and cows and everything moving up and down this stretch of road. That's where the city came from. Market was the first street, Main was the second street, and every other street came about following that. Michael's area continued to exist as long in a, in a successful, profitable way for the whole time that the markets existed. The markets closed in the mid 20th century because trucks arrived and the highways and everything, and uh, shipping things by river no longer was relevant. Um, and that's what came about. So this area was then became run down when Michael moved in and bought his shop. Admittedly on the cheap quite a lot of years ago, it was a dodgy area. The, um, 
it, it wasn't the sort of area you'd want to hang around at night, and yet nowadays it's full of old swanky restaurants, people are buying it for the garages and turning them into bars, that sort of thing. A lot of art galleries there. I hung around that area a fair bit and my project that will come out of this eventually is going to be based around that area and what's happening in that area. Just this last week they've just announced a new scheme to redevelop the area, putting new parks in, improving the streets, making the whole thing. Um, I think it's all details, but basically that area is going to change quite a lot in the coming year, so I'm going to manage to capture it at a point where it's about to hit that change. Um, this was in the local coffee shop that doubled up as a deli, um, called the Bodega. This was the view over the rooftops to from Michael's house. Next door to Michael's is a lawyer's called Paul Paletti. Michael and Paul have known each other for years and years and years. They started with the same strand in life as photographers. Paul realised that actually if he stopped being a photographer and was a lawyer, he'd make a lot more money, so he did. He still took photos, but what he also learnt as a lawyer was if he stopped buying photo books and bought original prints, he would actually make a lot of money out of those prints over years if he bought the right print. So he owns a number of prints. You walk into his, um, into his practice and the ground floor is mostly given over to a meeting room in this gallery. Now that's fine, but the gallery you walk into, you recognise half of the pictures on the walls and their original editions. This guy is buying up famous photographers' works from um, uh, photojournalists uh, in war zones through to various photographers around the world. He has an amazing collection. He's very interested in working with the Media Museum and with us to work on projects between the two cities. So um, I'll be talking to him over the next couple of months and meeting him again in September to see how that will work. Um, another more historic sign from the local area. Um, this is Laura and Josh. Laura was running Nulu Fest. Nulu is the sort of brand name we've come up with for this new, this upcoming Market Street, East Market area. Um, that year Laura was running Nulu Fest. I'd met her and within, I think within two minutes of meeting her I called her crazy, which resulted in this photo. Um, she was absolutely, she was a dynamo. She, and when you find out after all that that she's an accountant, it sort of blows out all those presuppositions out the window. Uh, another shot of the local neighbourhood. Charles is one of Michael's friends. Um, here he was showing us his pint, or rather his somewhat larger than a pint, pint glass. And this was in Michael's studio. Um, Charles arrived at various occasions through the week, so he appeared in more than one photo, so I thought one of the best to show him there. Um, there is a little bit more detail in this picture than you see in there, but that's basically the, new, uh, the East Market area. This is Michael's um, house is here in this block, and this is the downtown area, and this is sort of like the area looking south. Um, on the far left, there's a shop, uh, not a shop, a coffee shop called Please and Thank You, um, which is um, new. Um, linked to that was the paper, which I've not got any copies of here, um, which is a brand new newspaper set up to tell only good stories. Um, it's a neighbourhood focused <laughs> newspaper, there are some sample copies over there. We're also planning to work with them over the coming months, I'll tell you a little bit more about um, Actually, just jump back quickly. That street, four lanes of traffic, perfect place to have a street party. Um, for one day a year, they close that street. Uh, it's amazing when you see the amount of traffic that's going up and down, and then they suddenly close it and redirect all the traffic around it on a Saturday. But they have all sorts. They have a bubble wagon, lots of kids and families around. They have a stage, which I was just stood in front of. Those people weren't posing for me, they were watching the band behind me. Um, people turned out for that. It actually got busier later, but um, better photos with the sun going down. 
I talked to met loads of people that day. I mean, one of the things I think Turner said about this project, I've not shown you, there's not even a tenth of the pictures I've taken that I'm showing you tonight of um, this, uh, the whole Nulu area. But Francis and Randy were amazing. They just, I just sat, I, I was feeling a bit tired and sat down and said, do you mind if I sit here? We ended up having an hour conversation, uh, talking about all sorts of things. We had nothing in common in reality, but now we just had a great time. Handy, there was some beer flowing. Um, I don't have the tickets, but basically it was one of those events you turn up, give you money to man, he gives you tickets, you can buy your beer with tickets. Um, and because of that, didn't necessarily spot how strong some of the beer was. Um, I ended up quite merry later on. <laughs> Amazing that I still managed to take photos later on, but relatively in focus, at least in part. But uh, Rain Cass. Cass was interesting, she took a huge shine to me. She moved down from New York. Um, she had been adopted as a kid and she had met these people who looked just like her, who seemed to fit the description they had an adopted daughter. Um, she actually moved to Louisville because of them she, and then five years into moving there they finally found out she wasn't their adopted daughter and all these things were going on. And she still stayed there, she's not moved on after that but it's the things that bring you to a city. Um, a band called BD, and um, there was I think ten bands on through the day on this stage. It was literally set up in the middle of the street. Uh, two of the um, volunteers. I couldn't really go somewhere and say I was taking exposure leads to America without actually doing something exposure leadsish while I was there. So I put a shout out on Flickr and a couple of other places. There was a meetup group and said. Hi guys, I'm from the UK. I think it'd be really cool to meet you and walk around one of your streets. A little bit more in than that, but that was basically the, the tone of the thing. Massively shocked when actually a little bunch of people turned up. Uh, there was another five than we have in this picture who turned up after Michael took this shot for us. Um, through to, um, actually Debbie will know, front left is Sherry. No Sherry that's worked on the project oh, yeah. with us, that's Sherry. Yeah. Um, I'm still in contact with every single one of those people that came on walk, which is quite cool. And we had a lovely day. The Queen joined us. <laughs> <laughs> and we worked, walked down a street called Frankfurt <coughs> Avenue. Um, it was great. I had a lovely time. I took some photos that I'm quite pleased with. These will again eventually become part of this bigger project that I'm hopefully working on around the broader business. Halfway along this street we came across this sort of thing. This guy, Jerry, is phenomenal. He was at, we'd heard all these stories. No one that I was with had met him previously. A lot of people had been down the street, seen his, his, um, his house and yard. Basically, his yard, you can just about get through to see all the things that are in it. Um, I've, I've a load more pictures, which I, I will share online, but basically it's cramped full. It goes back at least twice as far as his house is deep, and it's full of all this stuff. There's lots of very inappropriate pictures of um, uh, African Americans and women in really ridiculous situations that go back to the 30s and stuff. And it's, he... he puts them there as point of jest, not uh, through anything else. He also has um, the Statue of Liberty has oh, I forgot. the name of the president who um, Watergate. Nixon. Nixon. It's got Nixon's face on the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all sorts of things like that. And he was actually sat there and he'd been going through his boot, he, he posted that picture, which was quite nice, especially as it's actually a composite picture of a load of different um, pictures. And he, he stood there the whole time wondering why I was clicking him and then looked like this. But he stood there for that. And then he started saying, can you have a look at these? And he just, he obviously did a lot of house cleans. He just had hundreds of these old pictures of Italy, randomly in the boot of his car. So, no, that was quite cool. I saw an American railroad. Um, and also in Louisville was based on was the railroad. It's not so big now, it doesn't have a single... 
a single passenger station there, so you, it only traffics goods through it. Um, another of the walkers on the event that's looking back towards downtown along, along the railway track. On the same street was um, Caviar Forge. Craig Caviar is actually a relatively good friend of Leeds. He's hosted two or three artists that have been over already. Uh, Michael and I weren't aware of this before Michael arranged for us to go. Um, but he's also a blacksmith, which is something you don't find everywhere, certainly even in the States these days. And we had a good couple of hours hanging around his blacksmith shop and snapping away at what he was up to. <coughs> I'm hoping to be in touch with him. I'm actually meeting with the guys that stayed with him I think this weekend coming. Uh, the guys from Leeds. Then on my last day, I actually had a day off to myself almost. Um, I, I went for a walk along Bastown Road. I'd heard all about it. It was sort of like, I suppose the issue coming to us is heading me. There's a lot of bars on it. There's a lot of crazy shops and that sort of thing. Um, and I had a really good day. <laughs> yeah, I quite like that. It's the whole bonkers. It, it, it so did fit in with a weird and independent thing. Um, the only KFC I saw in the whole time in Kentucky. So I hate, hate to disappoint you, but we have more KFCs in, sort of within the club. Got something to hear than they do there. I again visited, went and saw a lot of shopkeepers. This was Mary who was working in the Queen of Rags. It was just an amazing shop of second-hand clothes. I went past... <laughs> La Bamba. <laughs> I didn't go in, actually. It was closed at the time, unfortunately. I, um, you have SKP trolleys in America as well. And people do vandalise signs in America, just as much as they do in the UK. It's a comedy effect. Um, these guys were really cool. It took all on to stop them talking long enough to actually take the picture. They were taking the mic out of each other so much. I've got about a dozen pictures that are just no good because they look gone out, but they were cool. And they gave me the wine in the brown bag, which was just fantastic. I was getting a thank you gift for my hostess, and uh, yes, got a very nice bottle of wine and they wrapped it in a brown bag for me. I was made up like, yes. <laughs> And um, this is Katie, who was um, working in Wyoville, which is where I found out that you're supposed to pronounce it Louisville. Absolutely fine, until I got to the airport and found out there's actually about eight different ways you can say Louisville that are all completely acceptable, and depending which side of the city you live on, they all say it differently. Um, Adrian was also on Bardstown Road. Adrian, I can't remember, I have some notes, uh, I'll put them in here. But he, was, he, he migrated over from Africa. He basically made a complete mess of his life with drugs and booze. He'd lost his wife and his daughter. Um, in the end, having gone to rehab in Africa, he decided that the best thing he could do was leave and start again. So he jumped all the way to Louisville, which is a big move for anyone. Um, he started working on the side of the road. He eventually earned enough money to buy his own unit. He's now got this shop slash house that he lives and works in. He does t-shirts and signs and all sorts of cool things. And the guy took half an hour to sit and talk to me and we had a really a really good friendly conversation. I look forward to going back and seeing him. I really hope he's still there and still doing his thing. It was really cool. And then I did the thing you have to do when you're in Kentucky. The thing the Brit does abroad, which is you go into the Irish pub. So I went to a O'Shea's, which was entirely housed by Americans, and they were amused by the fact that I'd gone over there and gone into the Irish pub at Florence, but I just had a big craving for Guinness by then. Really. <coughs> had a bit of time there. Um, there's a few shops now that Louisville Miscellanea, especially the ramblings I took while I was out and about being aware. Um, I'm still trying to capture people the whole time. These two guys were so cool. I was wandering around taking photos. I got, I did a lot of my stuff on a little LX3. I'd, I'd saved my big camera for doing the portraits and 
nearly. So, you, so I was wandering around, just taking photos on my little camera, various bits of city, and they get, without any introduction, they just walk and say, what a cool job just to go walk around taking photos. Like, uh, I'm not doing it uh, anyway. Uh, do you guys mind if I take your picture? And they posed and we had a good chat for five minutes. In fact, they were so like, up for everything that I completely forgot to get you know, their names, so I don't you know what they call, but it's those two guys <laughs> from, um, from uh, um, This was, um, we had to pull over, Michael was taking a telephone call, and we just happened to be in front of this former railroad bridge, which is now converted into a cycle track. Um, that's why it looks so odd. The curvy bit is for the cycles to cycle up, and then you go over the bridge over to Indiana. Um, Louisville's on the Ohio River, the other side of the river is not Kentucky, it's Indiana, so. Roland was a barman putting his feet up outside his bar, having a, a cigarette and um, a pint himself after work. So I ruined it by sitting down and talking to him and <coughs> taking his photo, and his colleague who turned up a bit further on. A picture of the highways. It was very quiet, the highway, while I was there, because the bridge was shut, which was quite odd. There was one of the highways was open, but of course the whole intersection doesn't need to be an intersection when there's virtually no traffic on it. And it was quite an odd experience, and I was going to Michael, is it odd? He said, no, it's usually got back-to-back -back traffic here, and it's just all knocked out for this. But it was, it's right in the centre of the city, it's a huge intersection. Victor was one of the waiters um, in the Bristol. Had lunch after we'd been to the museum. This was after I'd been to teach with Michael. You can't really go to America and not go in Starbucks. <laughs> but quite interestingly, Karina on the left had also been to Perm, where Michael had been, so we had a bit of a conversation about that portion. Um, the other thing about Louisville, there's quite a lot of things about it, but such an unknown city, it has a lot going for it. Virtually all the baseball bats that are used in the um, Major League are made in Louisville. And they, have a, they make them to order for individual batsmen to suit. You walk around and almost everywhere along Main Street, every couple of yards or you get these cast metal uh, baseball bats with then the description who it is made for. And it goes all the way from the factory down to the baseball ground. Um, and it was, we didn't go into a museum, I had no particular interest, it was a very short trip at the time, I'm hoping to do it when I go back next time around and maybe get an exposure leads back or something. Um, but no, it was, it was quite cool. This was the first day, the climatisation day, Michael was driving me around, we were going through walking, but basically I took Leeds weather with me and it rained all day. Um, we pulled up just under the highway, you literally at this point there is a highway above you, um, on the side of the river, one of the bridges, um, and Marcel was just packing up for the day and he was in very high spirits having caught himself a fish, so uh, that's Marcel and his fish. A couple of pictures of downtown buildings. I met Adrian on the very last day, I'd gone across the road back to please and thank you just to have my last coffee on my own and collect my thoughts before I left. He was there, he was a medic just finishing for the night and we had a good chat. Um, yeah, it was quite cool. He was the last person I took a portrait of in Louisville. A typical street in Louisville. <coughs> this is looking back at Louisville from Indiana. Um, I actually went out of state for an hour. Um, that's the width of the river, so gives you an idea about how much wider than the air it is and <laughs> what happens when you close a, one of three bridges that allows... I mean, one of the things about it is a lot of people that are living on this side of the bank, there's no city nearby on this side of the bank, so anyone who's working as a commuter is going into Louisville, just about, or going up to, um, I forget the name of it, the next city of the town along. Um, so basically there's a lot of people working here. The other slightly odd thing about Louisville is... Three of these tower blocks are basically the same health insurance company. And it shows the difference you get when you don't have an NHS. <laughs> the other two were the same company as well. So there's five big multi-storey tower blocks in the 
the city centre. Um, as I said, there's no shops. There's about two roads that have shops on them, but there's no shops. The very centre, the equivalent to what would be the hedgerow, is actually a convention centre. And that sort of experience of being in a city that's nothing like what you're used to in the UK is, is quite odd. Would you say it's got no shops, but Kentucky has no shops? Or Louisville? Louisville City Centre. Yeah. You literally go out to out of town malls to shop. There isn't a concept of going into the city centre. The nightlife in the city centre is limited as well. It's not. There, there are a couple of high-profile places, but it's not as big as Leeds is. Um, in that respect, you do tend to go like about to town road, etc. And I believe that's fairly common for Central American cities. Yes. Sorry, Central USA cities. Um, I put that in because I liked it, but also because it's about 50 images stitched together and it took me a long time, so I thought <laughs> I would really show you. Um, it looks great when you see it large, I need to get a bit printed. Um, uh, similar shots of that area. I really need to remember some things, but this was the biggest factory of its kind, but I can't remember what it made, and that was basically the workers' clock. Um, the biggest factory is 10 in the world, not just in Louisville, and I can't remember what they made. Find that out and put that on when I upload it. This is not really good on video. I'll edit this bit out when I say I don't know anything. Like this, but. Um, <laughs> Michael outside the ice cream parlour. Shortly after this, I got given the option do you want an ice cream or shall we go have beer? So, at the Italian restaurant where they serve beer, <laughs> this, this was out the back of the Italian restaurant. I just thought it was quite a nice photo, really. It looked slightly odd. But, uh, there's a picture of inside it. It was basically, it was a restaurant, but to all intents and purposes, it was a sports bar. The bar was bigger than this wall, and it had, I think it was eight or nine different uh, screens, all showing different sports games. So it's like there's there's like five football matches. Some were high school, some were university, some were up at national level. But there's all these different things all going on at the same time. Um, this was a shot of the bridge where I was going to tell you about the bridge closing down. So that's a shot of the bridge and downtown, another of the insurance buildings. That's the majority of my feedback to you in terms of what I did while I was there. There's a lot more images. I shot three and a half thousand um, frames. There's still 800 in my edited set. There's 800 images in my edit. It needs editing down further. That's why this is a bit of a fly through. Um, the point of all this was that we achieved something. It wasn't just John goes out to Louisville and then comes back and shows you some pictures. So one of the things I've mentioned, the East Market project is um, quite dear to me. There's, there was a lot of really nice people I met out there and I'm hoping to continue that in the future and, and bring that to fruition and turn that into something that's a bit more meaningful. I'm looking to at the moment how we that I've already co-opted Michael and a couple of the people I met over there to um, assist on getting me more access to more people. But also, um, um, one of Michael's friends and is actually Michael's second cousin is retired and is willing to help me from an editorial perspective on that. So we're hoping to produce a, a proper research document about maybe what these buildings have been through their time and uh, throwing a few more shots at the end. But that's me, and you didn't all come here just to hear about what I've been up to. So. We've also set up something new. Um, until quite recently, the Leeds hasn't shouted very much about its link with Louisville. Um, it's been there, but not a lot's been done about it. And the way finances are at the local government, not a lot's going to happen unless someone does something. So one of the things that came to me was there is interest from their side and there is funding from their side. We just need people to maybe assist a bit here. So one of the things I did was talk to Sylvia, Michael and a few others and said, can we do some sort of collaborative project, work at whatever level we can actually achieve between ourselves, but what can we do? And so what is currently called LVLLDS, or Louisville Leeds, I can say it fast enough, um, 
I'll find a branding expert to maybe improve that at some point in the future. But it's basically leads, Louisville leads creative connections. Um, and it's basically a project that's aimed about finding people from both cities who are interested in sharing their cities with each other and collaborating in a creative way. Um, there will be a number of opportunities for anyone who's willing to put themselves forward. Um, they'll be presented to people and you'll just need to put a small, this is what I'd like to do together. There will also be projects where you're invited to take part. So there's a bit of both, there's the more curated, more helped version, but also version where you're willing to put yourself out there. There'll be a lot more detail about that coming soon. And we already have a website, which is lblds.wordpress.com. Um, so we're creating these projects to promote collaboration and to nurture new collaborations. To um, It's for all creatives, but because obviously I'm running Exposure Leads, I have a remit for photography, so we'll be pushing photography quite hard. Um, so the projects we're talking about this year all have photography as part of them, um, which there's four in total. The images you see at the moment are from one of them that's already happened. There will be regular publications, there will be re regular promotional events and exhibitions. There will be PR created around these images. The first publication um, involved Sherry, who you saw in the photo, the photo walk, and Michelle, her partner. Um, and from Leeds was myself and Debbie, who's in the audience tonight. We all shot pictures of textures. It was a project me and Debbie have been talking about <coughs> anyway. I happened to look at both Sherry and Michelle's profile and see they shot a lot of textures as well. It would be a good test case for a lot of people who are friendly to each other and interested in the project anyway. So we took all these pictures. We're a couple of weeks short away from printing the first booklet that will be available for people to buy and get involved in in that way. Um, we will be running an exhibition and um, we'll be getting in hopefully in the local press here but we've already set up that we'll definitely be hitting some of the local press from that aspect. The second project for uh, LBL LDS is starting. We're starting to recruit a new editor in Louisville to run that project. I ran the Leeds one so it's right that we find one in Louisville to run the next one and that's going to be um, essentially getting visual artists together with writers and the visual artist will create the visual image and the writer will write a piece to go along with it in collaboration with them. That will be open to everyone, so photographers and everything. Um, and you'll all be invited to put something forward. Um, there will be a limited number of space in the actual publication, but online we can put as many as we can get people working together. So that's number two. Um, and number three is already in the pipeline, which will be towards the end of the year, hopefully coming out for Christmas, which will be a newspaper along the lines of the paper, which you see over there, the Good News magazine, but we'll be creating similar content on both sides uh, in both cities and then bringing that together. So we'll shape a, a leads focus newspaper from the content here, they'll both create a Louisville and we'll all be able to join together online then and, and share. And again, creating this sort of like collaborative element to work into in, in unusual ways. Um, other projects we're talking about, this is Louisville. I've got some copies of this, which are available at basically, I'm just covering the cost we take to import them, um, at three pound a pop. It's a brand new photojournalism magazine set up in Louisville. The editor of that's very interested in working with us. The um, Deborah from the Photo Forum, I dropped a line to the other day, and she said, great, you're coming back, what can we do together? There is no shortage of opportunities to work with people from Louisville. Um, and I think anyone who's interested in, in finding ways of sharing with somebody or, or working together, or even just being able to contact someone who lives in a different, that slightly different culture but speaks the same language, literally, um, it's there. We have a disposable camera project that's about to come off. I'm about to spend some of the profits from exposure leads before the tax money takes money from us on buy some disposable cameras that will allow us to do one every month or fortnight of some from these take some pictures, send the camera to the America with notes of what pictures have taken. They try and respond appropriately and then take some more and it comes back to the last few photos to take some leads and all those pictures go online and there's some sort of discussion around that. 
So that's another project coming off, and we have a partner in Leeds to do all the development for that, so that's covered already. Um, we're also talking about bringing together students to do photographic projects, as in high school students, um, 11 to 14 year olds from both cities. Um, a proposal went to Leeds at Council this week, and I'm expecting. I got a favourable response from the initial one, it's gone out for um, checking about the various bodies, but essentially that will be a new project that will build on this. And I'm going back. Um, I loved it. I really, really, I had the time of my life over there. It wasn't some great roller coaster holiday, it was very tiring. I came back knackered. Simon, my partner who's here, will tell you how knackered I came back. It was chilled, as in the, as a, but I was on my feet the whole time and I did take all these photos, but it was fantastic. I would definitely recommend turning to anyone who gets a chance to do it. Um, I've, um, I know some of you are aware that we got some support from the council last time, well this time it's entirely self-funded. I've I'm paying my flight, um, I've, Michael very nicely volunteered to put me up again, which puts down on some of the expenses of being there, but I'm essentially going over to finish off the um, East Market project, so hopefully by the end of this year I'll have an idea about what the final outcome of that will be, but also to go and talk about the Bill Leeds, the project, to talk about to people over there and see who we can get interested in talking to us, who we can get interested about sharing with us. Um, it's, I know it's one of those things is you've only got my word for it at the moment, and then we've met Mike and know how cool he was, the people over there are just as cool. If there's opportunities to get over there, we will take them and we will look to foster those opportunities to create these links. But no, it's, it was a, just a wonderful experience and it was just great, very friendly people. Um, you hear about stories about the Midwest and the Deep South and the rivers on the border of both and you start to wonder what's it going to be like as a relatively liberal European landing there and to be honest, it was so like Leeds, it was unbelievable in terms of liberal attitudes on the uh, whole. And I, if anyone's thinking about stopping off there at some point, it's not an easy place to get to, you have to go by somewhere else, but it was a good time, I had a fantastic time there. So basically, has anyone got any questions or anything around the project or anything around the new project or anything else they want to ask? It was lovely to see some black and white photos. Did you do them in black and white at the time, or were they post-processed? I never shoot anything in black and white. <laughs> <laughs> I think everything digital. I may consider that this would be a good black and white photo when it comes out the other end, but no, I, I live in a world of I take, in, I take what I see in front of me, then deal with what it's going to be like, and I get it off the camera at the other end. You're saying something about these joint efforts. What kind of things have been bubbling around so far? Um, mostly in my head, so um, we, Sylvia's, I mean in terms of what are we doing, Sylvia's um, sourcing venues for launch events. The first launch event is going to be Michael's studio, which is just across the road from a lot of restaurants, so it's a perfect place. <coughs> they have several nights a month where they run the trolleybus late and basically we get lots of people going to the restaurants and galleries. So we'll run it and we'll also invite people to it like Sherry and Michelle who might be interested in taking part from their side. Um, I'm talking to photographers. I've re-gone through all my contacts and emailed nearly all of them as part of this process to say, look, I'm sorry if I haven't emailed you recently. Um, are you still interested in being a part of this? Um, and, and generally we're looking at getting... I, I'm focusing very much on photographers. I will be finding other organisations to do things like when I want writers, I'll go out to the writing groups in Leeds and say, look, we're trying to find some writers to get involved in this project. We've got all these people lined up who want to get involved. When it comes to um, painting and those sorts of visual arts, we'll go to East Street Arts and say, can you do a shout out for people? So really, what it's a case of at the moment is, let's get the projects and let's identify the type of people we need to find and let's then find them. And between the the connections I made, I was very lucky to meet some people who were very well connected in Louisville in terms of networking connected, <coughs> money connected, other people. Um, 
And so I think it shouldn't be a struggle to get these relatively low level projects off the ground, but projects that we can start to shout about louder and louder. I don't know where this is heading. Um, we have planned for three projects, as in the three actual curated projects, plus the uh, disposable camera project. If anyone has any idea for anything else, I'm very happy to support it, with, as I am with most things, if someone else is willing to do some legwork on it. But in terms of getting this project up and running, that's my plan for the rest of the year. Is that's probably my biggest plan. I mean, you've done the texture thing, haven't you? We've done the texture book. Are you thinking of things like the abandoned buildings that um, <laughs> we, Joe would be? I'm open to all sorts of ideas. They do have similar urban explorers over in Louisville. In fact, I got some pictures of one not so long ago from one of my contacts. So it's really a case of what works and how do we make it work. And how. I mean, one of the things we have to do is we can't just throw money at something. So if there's an output, the output has to be... We have to be able to charge for it so that we can get the money back in to pay for it. Um, we're currently trying to get some startup funding together, but once that's gone, it's gone. So that we have to find projects that are self funding. But then we've got digital, and we've <coughs> put as much stuff as we need online. So if we can find two people who can produce work that works well alongside each, each other in some form, that's great. If people just want to put pictures of leads that they put descriptions alongside that then become relevant to a Louisville audience, very happy to do that as well. And if someone wants to just put a shout at, up saying, I'm just doing something like this, and they're happy that it might take six months, two years before someone responds to them, we're happy to put those sort of profiles up and say, I'm, I'm interested in doing something, or I'm interested in doing something specific. It's really a case of, come to us with ideas, we're fairly open about what we do, for that. it's about these, creating these cultural connections that are generally positive, we're not about dissing each other's cities or dissing our own cities, but, that one. but just giving an honest, um, creating an honest conversation between the two cities. Mm -hmm. the, and the only thing that immediately jumps to mind is the abandoned railways from both cities. Yes. There's, there's, there's that. There's abandoned industrial buildings. Both have an industrial past that's since closed down. Um, both are very close to agriculture, obviously. There's that link. And um, nature's not far away in Louisville either. It's not like it's a million miles out. So, I mean, I don't know if any of you saw posted some pictures of Cathy uh, Van Risen, uh, who was on one of the photo on the photo walk, and hers are, are all nature shots, an old shot within Louisville metro area. So, there's a broad scope for stuff, and it, it's really a case of if you're interested in taking part, drop me a line. So what you're interested in taking part and what level you're interested in and let's see what we can um, find from the other side. We'll be having people from Louisville doing the same sort of thing over there. And we just find people who in some way, shape or the other might need a little bit of manipulation to get the two to work together, but let's find people who've got an interest in working together. It might be handy to find out other, you know, whatever things they do in Louisville that we do in Leeds. I mean, there's this art in closed shops kind of thing as well. Yeah. They, do. the, the, they don't have that just because they were very lucky at the <laughs> Their local government a few years ago came up, I only recently found it out, they came up with this scheme where the people, the galleries and the arts organisations could take out interest-free loans to set up there. So there's not so many art in shops, there's basically art in shops that are run as public commercial and artist cooperatives. But it's not a million miles away, so again it's it's li really a case of that's what I'm going out. I'll be doing a lot of research. If other people want to help with the research, very happy to do it. If anyone else wants to go out there and help with the project, I just can't put my hand in my back pocket and give you the flight, I'm afraid. But um, in terms of making connections, it's let's make the connections, let's look at what connections are there. I'll start to identify them, and as I am identify them, we'll try and open them up online from both cities. So a bit. All these things take time, you have to go meet people and get them to come on board with the idea and, and say, yeah, I'm happy to do that. So that's part of why it's taking on. But it's happening. And it's not a, I've no intentions to do it all in a big rush. It's like, let's take our time, do it right. I, I'm, I'm not intending to have 50 to 100 artists all talking to each other within a couple of months, but let's see where we can go. I guess there must be a, a Louisville Flickr group or something. Maybe just interested to have a look and see what the photographers over there are doing in their own city. There are there's about three or four Louisville Flickr groups, none are like Leeds. 
All right. Uh, there's occasional things, and what's quite interesting, it's some of the people I've met have started to talk a bit more on them since I've been. Um, but then you've got people like the Photo Forum, and there is another group that seems a bit closed, and Michael's actually a member of it, but doesn't actually get involved in it. Uh, that I'm trying to get ac get more of an access into, and I'll be doing a bit more research around whether there's neighbourhood photography groups and things like that. There's 1.2 million people in the city. There's got to be some people interested in socially engaging in photography. Is it like making comparisons, John? Uh, is that the to give each side of the water uh, a comparison about what's going on? of finding out where advantages are on each side or downfalls on each side? Um, I don't think it's necessarily about downfalls. Um, I mean, you've just mentioned about the, the projects where um, empty buildings are open to for exhibitions and, and, but they're not there. That's the sort of downfall the top. No, no, they have lots of galleries, they just don't have the art in empty buildings because there's no need for yes. it. Um, I think um, I'm, not, I'm not making any judgments on what we should do, it's about creating these creative links. How those links work for the two, three, ten, twenty artists who want to collaborate together. I don't want to be judgmental about that or, or make any decisions about what that is. We have some projects that we're doing that will probably help shape it, which will probably be generally positive because that's generally one of the way I work and I think it's generally a benefit to have a positive overall feel about let's share together, let's work together, let's let's show each other what our lives are like or let's show each other some aspects of our lives or the way we live or the place we live in or th those sorts of things that come about from being place related. but. I don't mind if two artists want to go and do something completely abstract together. I mean, the, the textures project isn't a million miles from tech, from being abstract. Um, I mean, we, th there are all sorts of reasons why the textures project came about, but the reason it worked, I think, was because um, I was trying to find PDF, but I'll, I'll, the PDF will be available soon. Um, it shows textures that, with a bit of know-how, you can work out which one's in Leeds and which one's in Louisville, but at first glance, they could quite easily be of either city. Um, I'll bring back up the ones that are actually on this presentation. I mean, pictures like that could be of either city, and we intentionally set out on the first project to not make it city specific. We could play a guessing game. Which city do you think that is? Is that Leeds because of Whitewash? Nope. Louisville. That one. That was high tech, I suspect. That's Leeds. Mm. Yeah, it's actually just out here. <laughs> it's, it's behind the old broadcasting house. Oops. That one? So you see, when you start to get into it, you soon start to realise which is which, and some are very difficult to guess. That one could literally be either. Um, that one could be either. Um, but no, I, I, with no preconceptions about what it is, we anticipate working with This Is Louisville. Well, that's going to identify that we're going to have to do photojournalism. There is no choice there. That they're, they're set up to be a photojournalism publication. When we work with the paper, that's going to have to be editorially led because it is, it's not necessarily journalism per se, but it is going to be photos of people and portraits, so there's a link there. If we happen to make contact with, say, a strobis group, that would then determine what sort of photo. I, I don't think there's any need to define what it is. Let's just create the links and let's make them interesting and um, about connecting two cities. And and about creating new great work between the two as well. Anyone got any more questions?
something like cake. <laughs> <laughs> then, I think we should open some cake. I thank you very much for listening to my presentation. It's gone longer than I hoped it would. Um, and yeah, if anyone has any questions after, I'll be hanging around to answer those. And if you want to ask me something away from here, just drop me an email on all the usual methods. And I'd love to answer your questions. But thank you for your time and your patience. Thank you, Jonathan.